and the commentary gives the uh, the analogy of the army with the four factors and music with five factors and the part with eight factors and so on. So the army with the four factors means the army consisting of elephants, horses, and troops. What is the other thing? Arrows. Oh, chariots. <laughs> Tanks, <laughs> infantry, tanks, mm, horses, and, and elephants. <laughs> Where are you reading now? Well, Bottom of 152. Uh, yeah. Oh, the last line, the army with four factors, music with five factors. That is, there's five kinds of uh, musical instruments, like a, a drum with, with the with the what do you call the leather uh, put on the drum? What do you call the skin? Skin, yeah. So skin on one side, skin on both sides, and then something you can. What do you call that? Reed. Uh, no, no. I mean whistle. Whistle. Uh, not whistle. Uh, uh, like a flute. <laughs> and then something you can uh, strike together, like cymbals and then eightfold path. So when we say eightfold path, then the eight factors are the path, and there is no path uh, different from or apart from the eight constituents. In the same way, when we say jhana, we mean these five factors in, uh, 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 in this first jhana, and in the fourth, uh, second jhana, we, we mean four, four factors and so on. So we, we, we must understand jhana, constituent or factors of jhana and jhana consciousness. Now, jhana means these five factors, now vitaga, vijana, and so on. Constituents of jhana means each of them. So, the, the combination or group of five factors is jhana, and each one is jhana factor. And consciousness accompanied by these five factors is called jhana consciousness. So the, we, we must know the, the, the difference. Now, uh, in paragraph 109, although unification of mind is not actually listed among these factors in the summary version beginning, which is accompanied by applied and sustained thought, nevertheless, it is mentioned later in the Vibhanga as follows. Vibhanga means exposition. Jhana, it is applied thought, sustained thought, happiness, place, unification. And so it is a fact that true for the intention with which the Blessed One gave the summary is the same as that which he gave the exposition that follows it. So, uh, although in, in, the, in the first uh, passage, Buddha did not mention unification of mind, later on when he... Uh, Make an exposition of that passage, Buddha said, jhana means applied thought, sustained thought, happiness, bliss, and unification. So unification of mind is one of the factors of jhana. And unification is actually very important because it is what we call um, samadhi, which is, uh, which is a synonym for jhana also. <coughs> So the, 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 these are the five factors. So the first jhana abandons five and possesses the other five. So the, the five that are abandoned are the five mental hindrances and the five that, that it possesses are uh, such the initial application and others. And these five mental hindrances that are abandoned are just for the duration of the jhana? That's right, yes. Not, not totally abandoned, because they, they may come back to the person. They, they, these are totally, or totally abandoned or eradicated only at the moment of, mm, the moment of enlightenment. Through the power of concentration? Yeah, through the power of uh, concentration and 
penetration into the nature of things. In other words, through the power of vipassana. So in order to be successful in vipassana, you, you, you need concentration. Because without concentration, and no vipassana penetration can arise. But why then, if you have insight and abandon them through insight, why do they return? No, when uh, by insight, insight can abandon only temporarily, not not altogether. But only when a person reaches the stage of enlightenment can uh, he abandon all. This, uh, the, the mental defilements altogether, I mean, once and for all. Because vipassana is not strong enough say, to, to eradicate or to abandon them once and for all. That is why uh, if, we, if we do not reach the stage of enlightenment, then they, 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 they just come to us come back to us when we do not practice meditation. They do, when, when, when we are practicing meditation, they, they, they are, how do you call it, pushed to some, some, some place and they will not come to us, they will not arise in our minds. But uh, we, we, we stop meditation and then we, uh, we started doing things and then we may, we may get one or many of these hindrances again. So these are Abandon just temporarily, not not uh, not altogether. You mean you can sort of backslide after the first jhana? Even after the first jhana, they can come back. But uh, when there is first jhana, when when uh, first jhana consciousness is in our mind, then these uh, mental de- hindrances do not arise. They are something like suppressed, because uh, mental hindrances and jhana are incompatible with each other. When one is there, mm, and the other is not. They cannot uh, coexist. So, in order to get jhana, we have to abandon mental hindrances. And once you've achieved first jhana, does it then become subsequently easier to experience it again? Oh, uh, you mean the jhana? Yes. Yeah. So you know yes. how to abandon the hindrances and you know how to So after, uh, you, you, after you get the jhana, then the, the, this book will tell you what, what to do to keep it uh, for a long time and then to go on to the second jhana and so on. So after getting the jhana, oh, first it explains that it is caught in three ways and possesses the ten characteristics and so on. These procedures are a little difficult to understand. The first jhana has a three, a good in three ways. That is good in the beginning, good in the uh, middle, and good in the end. And good in the beginning um, is explained as the first jhana purification of the way is the beginning. And then how many characteristics has the beginning? The beginning has three characteristics. The mind is purified of obstruction to that jhana. That means mind is free from um, mental hindrances. Because it is purified, the mind makes way for the central state of equilibrium, which is the sign of serenity. Uh, what is makes way for? What do you mean by that? Where, where are you? Let, let, let some, some, something happen. Prepare. For instance, um, if you were to walk into the room, yes. people would make way for you so that you could pass. Yeah. But the Pali word here does not mean that. <laughs> it is to go to or to, to reach, not make way for. So because it is purified, the mind reaches the state of cent- uh, central sign of serenity or something like that. And central here means not too uh, lax or not too uh, active. Not overactive or not what do you call that? Underactive? 
something like that. So the the effort or the energy should be just the right amount, neither too little nor too much. Barely. Sometimes they say the word barely. Sounds like he's talking about the middle way. Yeah, the, the, the middle way, right? And because it has made way, the same thing. Because it has reached, the mind enters into that state, and it is since the mind becomes purified of obstructions, and through being purified, makes way for uh, reaches the central state of equilibrium, which is a sign of serenity, and having made way, enters into that state, and so on. So we will skip these passages and go to, let me see where. Uh, uh, paragraph 119. Now the first, it is called first jhana because it starts in numerical series, that means it is just uh, it is first, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Or it is called first jhana because it arises first. <laughs> it is called jhana because of lighting the object. What is lighting? To make shine? Or to, to, to put to put fire? On. To put light, like if you just turn the switch on, you light um, the But here it is burning, not lighting. So burning the oh no 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 I mean the next no uh, burning the next one this is um, what do you call uh, observing closely observing the object that is what is meant here upanijana means illuminating intensely not illuminating mm -hmm. intensely observing not lighting so the word jhana in Pali has two meanings one is to look closely, to observe closely. That is one meaning. And the other is to burn. So, when you get jhana, then your mind is uh, closed or your mind is on the object. <coughs> and you burn away the five hindrances. That is why it is called jhana. So there are two meanings to the word jhana. Uh, one, that observes closely or one that burns up the opposition. Opposition here means mental hindrances. I thought you had to burn up the hindrances in order to get into jhana. Yeah. Rather than once you get into jhana, then the hindrances. They, 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 at the moment, before reaching the state of jhana, uh, they, they, are not, they are not well burned. They, 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 they can come back. But when, at the moment of jhana, then they are, they are well, well suppressed. <laughs> <laughs> then the, the, the disk of earth is called earth kasina. And this is, uh, when you practice uh, earth kasina meditation, what you, uh, the jhana you get is also called uh, earth kasina, or earth kasina jhana. So, in the sense of eternal, uh, entirety, the word Pali word kasina means entire or all. That means when you look at the disc, you, you look at the whole disc and not part of the disc. And you look at it as a whole. So the word kasina means entire. And the sign acquired with that as its support and also the jhana acquired in the earth kasina sign are also called too. Now, the, the, the Pali word Patawi Kasina, uh, which is translated as Ad Kasina, can mean the, the earth disk and also the sign of earth disk or the image of earth disk uh, uh, you, you, you get in your mind and also the jhana which you get. Uh, Keeping your mind on the uh, on the on the that on that sign of at this, so the Pali word patawi uh, kasina or at kasina can mean three things: the disc itself and 
the image of the disc in the mind and the jhana you get uh, taking that image as an object. Now, when it has been attained in this way, the modes of M-O-D-E-S, there should be S here, the modes of its attainment must be discerned by the meditator as if you are a hair splitter or a cook. So, after getting first jhana, and you, 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 you must also know the, the mode of its attainment, that is, uh, <coughs> because if, if, you, if you happen to lose that jhana, then you, you know what to do again. Say, uh, I got this jhana when I was at a certain place or when, when I had uh, certain kinds of uh, suitabilities and so on. So that, and also uh, I got this jhana when I have eaten a kind of food or when I was at a, a, at a certain place. So when you lose the jhana, then you can uh, experience them again. So after getting the jhana, uh, a yogi must uh, discern or note the modes of its attainment. Um, that's a problem. Um, you attain jhana by eating something, uh, or, or, or while eating something, not by. Not, not while eating, or after eating something. Uh, you, you know, food is one of these uh, suitable things uh, we have to take into account. Sometimes, if you if you are if you desire to if you have desire to eat something and if you don't have that and and your meditation doesn't go well <laughs> because you have the attachment to that food and <laughs> so there is something in your mind <laughs> and when you have that uh, suitable food then your mind becomes uh, calm and then you can practice meditation. The same with place. Sometimes the place is not suitable for you. Right, but uh, the, when you say secluded, actually that does not mean necessarily that the object isn't there. For instance, the food. No. When, when, you, when you say secluded, then you, you have eaten food already. Yes. So yeah, after you eat the food, you can be secluded. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you, in that case, you haven't suppressed the sense of desire. You have accommodated the sense desire, and by that mode... Uh, that, that is actually, uh, you know, there are some food which are not suitable. And if you eat unsuitable <coughs> food, then you, uh, you, you may get indigestion or you may get some kind of discomfort, and so that interferes with your uh, practice of meditation. So suitable food is also... <coughs> A, an important fact that will be taken into account. And also the suitable place. And when, if the place is noisy and then it's dirty and uh, all, with, with all other things, then it's difficult to get jhana or pra uh, even practice meditation. So the, the, these are also important. And so after getting jhana also you have to note this. Uh, I, I got the jhana when I had some kind of food or when I when I was at a certain place or when I was living with certain monks in a monastery and so on. And that, that is not all. Then there, is some, there are some other things to do too. Now, and when he recaptures those moods by apprehending the sign, he just succeeds in reaching absorption, but not in making it last. That means, <coughs> after getting the, the jhana, uh, you must make notes of these modes or signs of the attainment, so that if, if you happen to lose it, then you can get it again by applying all these things. Then, that will help you just to get the, 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 the jhana again but not to keep it for a long time, not to sustain it. That means, after getting jhana, uh, 
you, you will enter into the attainment of, sustained attainment of jhana, say for one hour, for two hours, or for a whole day. Now, in order to be in the jhana, in the jhana state for a long time, and you need to do some other things. So, the, uh, you need to, to do what here? Yeah. It is a, uh, he just succeeds in reaching absorption, but not in making it last. It lasts when it is absolutely purified from states that obstruct concentration. So he has to avoid uh, the dangers of concentration or the obstructions of concentration. And they are uh, just the five mental hindrances again. And so, not only has a yogi to, to discern the modes of or the signs of attainment, but he also has to purify his mind absolutely from the states that obstruct concentration and then last ill will and other things. And then, on page 158, paragraph 126. So, if he wants to remain long in the jhana, he must enter upon it after first purifying his mind from obstructive states. So, first mm, try to... That means, after getting jhana, you don't go back to sens uh, sensual objects or whatever. You just keep them uh, away from you so that you can... Uh, <clears throat> you, you are able to be in the jhana for a long time. And after that, in order to perfect the development of consciousness, he should besides extend the counterpart sign according as acquired. So, after uh, avoiding the obstructions to, to jhana, he must, what do you call that? He must extend the counterpart sign. Now, when, when a person gets jhana, uh, before he, he gets jhana, he practices on the counterpart sign. So if the counterpart sign is about eight, eight, 8 inches diameter, then that is the same size. Now, the, the commentator says that he is to extend that sign. That means exercising his ability in, in, in what do you call in dealing with the, the, the object, uh, dealing with the sign. So he should uh, extend the sign. And this extension of sign can be done during excess or uh, when one gets jhana absorption. Before getting jhana, during the stage of excess concentration also, uh, you can extend the sign. Or after getting jhana. And when you, uh, extend, uh, when you extend the sign, you are not to extend it like um, extending a clay bowl and so on. That means, I think, that when potters make, make pots, uh, they do not decide uh, this pot is to be uh, this much big, or maybe the size, uh, say, uh, five, five, five inches diameter or whatever, but they just uh, make the pot and then they extend it little by little. But they, they do not specify uh, what size the pot will be, something like that. You, you are not to do like that. When you uh, extend a sign, that you must have a, a definite size, something like that. Say, I will extend it uh, by one finger breadth, two finger breadth, three finger breadth, or I will extend it to the size of uh, the porch or size of a building. Uh, I will extend it to the size of the whole wall and so on. So uh, you have to extend the sign so that you you are adept at um, dealing with the the counterpart sign. Now, when the beginner has reached the first jhana in this sign. He should enter upon it often without reviewing it much. That is on page 159. So, after extending the sign, what must he do? He must uh, get into the jhana repeatedly. And 
he must not spend much time reviewing. Now, after getting into jhana, after, uh, after the jhana thought process, there follows some, some thought process of reviewing the, the constituents of jhana, the observing the constituents of jhana. Now the, the, the meditator states that do not do this too much because if you review too much then the factors appear uh, very uh, crudely, the jhana factors uh, occur crudely and weakly in one who reviews it too much. So you do not review it too much but you just enter into it and then get out of it, enter into it and so on. Can you tell me what you think reviewing it means? Now, reviewing means you get into jhana and then you get out of it and you concentrate on the on the on the constituents of jhana, like uh, let us say vitaka. So you you concentrate on vitaka and then you concentrate on vichana and so on. So that is reviewing the jhana factors. You do not do that because if you do that, they they become crude. And if you do that, while he is endeavoring for the unfamiliar higher jhana, he falls away from the first jhana and fails to reach the second. That means, uh, not actually unfamiliar, but it is not so familiar. You know, and, and it is not higher jhana, it means the first jhana. After you get the first jhana, you are not so familiar with that. You just have it. You are not, not well acquainted with that jhana. So you have to, you make yourself well acquainted with jhana by en entering into it again and again and not reviewing much the factors of jhana. So it should be, uh, while, you see the sentence, uh, paragraph 129, uh, about the end. While he is endeavoring for the not so familiar first jhana, not higher, not so familiar first jhana. He falls away from the first jhana and fails to reach the second. So the process of becoming familiar with the first jhana is just to touch upon the five factors. No, no. Just to enter into the jhana, to, to, to let them arise in your mind, but not uh, not reviewing them, not, not watching them. Do they just present themselves That's right. normally? Yes, yeah. And when they present itself in, in, in a strong, strong state, then they are called jhana. So you do not dwell upon each and every one of the factors. But you just enter in the, into the jhana and then get, get out of it. So after that, he should acquire mastery in the five ways, that is on uh, paragraph 131. So after um, getting into it and not reviewing much, what he should do is acquire mastery in the five ways. That is mastery in adverting, that means mastering in reviewing the factors, and then mastery in Attaining, that is getting into the jhana. Mastering and resolving, that is uh, resolving how long you are going to stay in jhana. Mastering and emerging, that is getting out of jhana. And mastering and reviewing, that is the same as the first one. Uh, mastering and adverting. So these are the five, uh, five, hmm, what do you call that? Mastery you should acquire with regard to the jhana you have attained. And then there's an explanation of the, the five mysteries one by one. So the first one is um, when he emerges from the first jhana and first of all adverts to the applied thought then next to the adverting that arose interrupting the life continuum, either four or five impulsions impel with that applied thought as their object. Now, when you review 
the 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 jhana factors, then the jhana may run seven times. But when you are reviewing rep, in rapid succession, uh, one jhana factor after another, then uh, the the, the do not run for six or seven times, but only four or five times because. Uh, you have to you have to hurry in this way. <laughs> there are two life continuum that is Bhavanga consciousness. Then there is adverting with the sustained thought as its object, then next to uh, <coughs> Vichara and then next to PD and so on. He is able to prolong the, his conscious process uninterruptedly in this way with the five channel factors, then his mastery of adverting is successful. But this mastery mastery is found at its acme of perfection in the Blessed One's twin marvel, or for others on the aforesaid occasion. There is no quicker mastery in adverting than that. That means adverting takes place only uh, four or five Javana moments, and then two Bhavanga moments interrupting, and then for the next Jana factor, and then two Bhavanga moments, and then for the next Jana factor, and so on. And the second one is getting quickly into the Jana. And the Venerable Mahamoglana's ability to enter upon jhana quickly, as in the taming of the royal Nagasabha and Nandopananda, is called mastery in the taming. There was a Naga, and he was very vicious. So, uh, and he was, he was angry with the Buddha, because Buddha went above him, and then maybe put some uh, dust on, on, on his head. So he quite... Mount Meru, and then get ready to, to attack the Buddha. And then Buddha, uh, the, the Mahamoglana is a Buddha's disciple, so he requested Buddha to let him tame the dragon, so Buddha let him do it. Because Mahamoglana was the foremost among those who have the, the psychic powers. Then at that time, Moglana entered into the, into the, what do you call it? inside of the body of the Naga, and then uh, came out again, and then went into it again, and so, and when he was uh, at the, say, what do you call it? At the entrance of the mouth, the dragon uh, put forth fire to burn him. So at that moment, he, the Moglana had, had to get into Jhana very quickly. <laughs> And it is said that only only Mahamoglana could do that, and not other disciples. So that is uh, ability to to enter upon jhana quickly. And the next is to remain in jhana for a moment, consisting in exactly a finger snap, or exactly ten finger snaps, is called mastery and resolving. Actually, resolving here means just remaining in the jhana, uh, keeping the jhana while uh, suppressing the bhavanga. So that is not letting bhavanga arise. Uh, so keeping the jhana for, uh, for a period of time. Uh, a finger snap or ten finger snaps or the whole day. And then ability to emerge quickly in the same way is called mastery in emerging. Then getting out of jhana also. And the study of elder Buddha Rekita may be told in order to illustrate both these last eight years after his admission to the community and so on. So here, this, this elder could enter into jhana and get out of it very, very quickly. So he saw a royal supana. Supana means... Supana, what supana? Mm, you know Garuda? Do you know Garuda? A mythical bird. Right. So there, it is supana. So actually, it may be a kite or enemy of the snakes. Uh, hmm? Karuda often is, has a snake in it. Yeah. Yes. It yeah. Snake. So that, that kind of bird swooping down from the sky, intending to see the attendant royal Naga serpent as he was getting rice cruel accepted for the elder. The, the elder Buddha Regita created a rock, meanwhile, maybe a mountain, or, and then seizing the royal Naga by the arm, he 
pushed him inside it. Not no, he went into it with the naga with him. Not not he pushed the naga into the rock, but he took the naga by the arm and then entered the rock himself and with the naga. The royal subana gave a rock a blow and made off. The senior elder remarked, "Friends, if Rakita had not been here, we should all have been put to shame, because." Even though there are many uh, monks uh, who had psychic power, and none of us uh, was able to save uh, the Naga from being taken by the, uh, by the bird, Subana. Mastery in reviewing is described in the same way as mastery in adverting. For the reviewing impulsions are in fact those next to the adverting mentioned there. The mastery in reviewing and mastering in adverting may mean the same thing because they are in one and the same same thought process. Mastering and reviewing are the reviewing impulsions or javanas that are in that thought process. So the javanas in that thought process are mastering and reviewing and the adverting in that pro thought process is the the mastery in adverting. So in fact, they, they are not, not so different. When he has once acquired mastery in these five ways, then on emerging from the now familiar first jhana, he can regard the flaws in, in it in this way and so on. That comes to, to, the, to the approach of second jhana. So we will take it up next week. <laughs> so this is the first jhana. So you try to get the first jhana and then and uh, you, you, you develop it so that uh, you can get into it quickly, get out of it quickly and so on. And these five masteries are uh, meant for going over to the second jhana, the third jhana and so on. So without these masteries, um, the five masteries, you cannot get the second jhana and third jhana and so on. So first trying to get it, then getting it, and then keeping it, and then going over to the higher ones. And how many jhanas are there? Is there uh, four jhanas will be mentioned four. here. Four or four or five. You know, uh, there are four full methods of jhanas and five full methods of jhanas. But actually, they mean the same. same but full, a full, full method of jhanas is mostly mentioned in the sodas. We, we very seldom find five jhanas in the sodas. So whenever Buddha talk about jhana, he, he mentioned four jhanas. But in Abhidhamma, both are mentioned, four jhanas and five jhanas. And the four become five uh, depending on the ability of the person to to surmount or to get rid of the jhana factors. Now, there are persons who are who are uh, who have um, what do you call uh, powerful intelligence or understanding or knowledge, and so they are able to get rid of two factors, the first and the second, the vitaka and vijara, at the same time. For them, there are only four jhanas. But there are others who can get rid of only one at a time. First, get rid of vitaka. And next time, get rid of vichara. So for them, there are five jhanas. But actually, they are, they are the same. <laughs> I don't know. That, that depends on the, the person's experience in the past. And if a person has experience in the past, then it, it, it takes not long. But otherwise, you know, mm, nowadays people practice yeah, some kind of casino meditation 
And even to get excess concentration, they have to uh, practice about six months, sometimes maybe longer. Yeah, there are people who practice the, the uh, color meditation, the color this meditation. And that there is a monk in Los Angeles who said he practiced uh, a kind of color meditation. And he, he got the, the excess concentration, but not to the absorption concentration. And also, maybe it depends on how intensively you, you, you practice. So if you practice, say, two, two, three hours a day, or, say, eight or nine hours a day, then that will be uh, different. <laughs> it seems like they're good things, you know, and you have to give them up. And you know, those like the, like the first jhana has pretty good things. Yes. Actually, the, the, these are... Uh, these are mentioned as uh, sukha or happiness. Yeah. So Buddha first uh, said that there is happiness. <coughs> happiness uh, people get from enjoying sense, sense pleasures. So that is a kind of happiness, although it is not not in an ultimate sense. But compare with the happiness you get from sense, sensual objects. First jhana happiness is better. Because, because there is no sense, desire, nothing, but you are really uh, calm and happy. And then the second jhana happiness is better than first jhana happiness, because there is no initial application and sustained application to, to disturb your, or to, to, to disturb your equilibrium of mind. And then the third jhana is better than second jhana, and so on. So uh, step by step, Buddha, uh, pointed out that there are different kinds of happiness. But even the, the highest form of jhana, the Aruba jhana, is still not free from, not altogether free from suffering, because there is uh, disappearance of this, or the, there is the end of that jhana too, because uh, the jhana cannot last forever. So there is uh, the jhana consciousness arises and then it must disappear and then maybe arise again and disappear. So it, it, it even that very high high form of happiness uh, has a beginning and an end, and so that it is also not ultimate happiness. So the, the ultimate happiness is uh, freedom from all all mental and physical phenomena, I mean, formations, and so you know, the, the highest form of happiness is nibbana happiness, and uh, the, the abandonment of all mental defilements. So Buddha uh, gave different kinds of happiness, one, one above the other. So jhana happiness is in, uh, in itself a great happiness, but still it is not enough for, for Buddha. <laughs> So and he thought that the attainment of the jhanas in succession was the way to abandoning all the mental defilements? Is that the path toward...? Uh, it, it is not an inevitable path, although uh, if you read sodas, it seems like that. that you go through these um, jhanas stage by stage and then change over to vipassana because uh, when buddha described his his attainment of buddhahood he first said he said that he practiced um, breathing meditation and then he, he he got first jhana second jhana third jhana fourth jhana and then he he attained the, the supernormal knowledge of uh, seeing his past lives and so on and only only after getting uh, two kinds of supernormal knowledge did he practice vipassana meditations. So only then did he change to vipassana meditation. Before that, uh, the practice of samatha, he practiced uh, samatha meditation and, and got the jhanas. And then uh, during the last last part of the night, he changed uh, to vipassana meditation. That's when he saw the twelve. 
Yes. yes, immediately before the attainment of Buddhahood, he reflected upon the 12th chain uh, causal relationship. But, but the earlier insights were uh, like seeing his past lives and seeing all of the mm -hmm. beings mm -hmm. resolving, revolving. Yeah. Those were shamatha. Yes, yeah. Those are uh, not, not exactly samatha, but those are related to samatha. Because uh, the ability to see these come from the from the from the uh, practice of samatha meditation, actually uh, from the jhanas. Only after getting jhanas can one get uh, these kinds of knowledge. They are special, special kind of jhanas we can call them. Actually, they are the a variety of fifth jhana or fourth jhana. Uh, in fourfold method it is fourth jhana and in fivefold method fifth jhana. So after getting fifth jhana you have to develop them mm, specially so that you get uh, this uh, super normal knowledge. So when you read sodas it, 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 it goes something like you first practice samatha meditation and then change to vipassana meditation. But in the later commentaries, it is said that uh, you can skip samatha and practice vipassana, and they are called dry, dry vipassana meditators. That means <laughs> they don't practice vipa, I mean, uh, samatha meditation. Is but samatha calming the mind. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even, even uh, there is no, no.